Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well. Today I thought I would share with you in my misery. A lot of you seem to enjoy it when I tell you about how we get stitched up and bad things happening and finance companies rejecting cars and, you know, the less glamorous and more annoying side of the car trade. So today I thought I'd show you one where we kind of got tucked up royally on buying a part exchange. There were some hidden issues with this car that we didn't pick up on and the customer on his own was just a bit difficult and it's just one that I'm regretting. So I thought I'd walk you through it before I tell you what we're going to do to sort of get out of the situation, probably at a loss. It's not this fine piece of automotive beauty, the Chevrolet Avio, that's just one of our courtesy cars. It is out here in the scrapyard where it probably belongs. So follow me and we'll go and have a look. Now on the surface from a distance, this 2011 BMW 320D convertible looks quite good. White, black alloy wheels. It's got coral red interior as well, which I love. It's one of my favorite interior on BMWs. It's on 120,000 miles, maybe just over. And it's generally in pretty good condition other than a couple of little things which we'll get into. But this, I think we ended up paying 2,295 pounds for it. This is what I said in the system. I thought for a while we'd pay 2,750, but maybe I was wrong. Um, I think maybe that's just, I think we kind of did, but Jason has done the deal that way so that we paid less for the part exchange, but gave them a discount on our car that he had, which was a very nice 2018 BMW 5 Series, 520D. Probably the most comfortable car we've had in stock for a long time. It just drove like absolutely spot on. Um, and this was part exchange. I think we'd offered him like two grand for it, but he wanted a lot more. He was very adamant that this was worth a lot more and really stuck to his guns. I think Jason had his arm twisted a little bit and that's why we ended up with probably the equivalent of what we're given for this was about 2,750 quid. When he turned up in the evening to actually show us his car, because he's never had it with him, which is convenient, isn't it? He said, Jason said, oh, what's going on with the bonnet here? They didn't tell me about that. You can see the grill's broken and held together with zip ties. He said, oh yeah, I, uh, I hit a deer. But you know, it just needs a touch in. A touch in? I think the guys have actually tried to do their best to like push that out but of course being that part of the bonnet it's like double skin so really you would have needed a new bonnet but you know we thought I, I don't know I don't even know what we thought this is something we're gonna have to address but we still ended up doing the deal there was enough money in the deal I guess that it wouldn't matter whatever happened with this um I guess if we got rid of it for nothing we would have broken even so while I'm losing out I should have had a profit from both cars even a small one, but I don't think I will. I mean, it's, it's difficult because it drove perfectly fine. I think Jason maybe didn't plug this one in when we normally do because the guy came at like six o'clock in the evening. It seems to drive absolutely spot on on the test drive, perfectly fine, no warning lights. And when Sophie had gone to try and sell this, someone had come to test drive it, they'd given it a real hard kind of boot full, accelerating with it, which we hadn't done. And the engine management light came on, which led us to plug in my OBD 11, which I keep in my bag at home with me all the time and it did show us some faults, which fair enough, put them off and are causing us a bit of a headache. Before we get into that, let's just, let's just have a little look around the car. So we've got, what are they, almost like the CSL style alloy wheels. They're quite nice, they definitely need a good clean, but it's probably not worth doing. We've got Ceylons on there. What have we got on the front, Toby? We got then, oh, Falcon. Okay, it's the middle of the road, a Zenus or something. So we've got Salem somethings on the back. No, there's something else again. Kuto, what the hell? Kuto Gain something. And Falcons. So we've got matching Falcons on the front and then random ones on the back. Of course, it is the convertible with the hard roof. Bodywork generally, not bad condition. Um, interior is in pretty good condition as well. But let's have a look in the boot first. Make sure they've got these typically like faded centre rear lights you can polish them up and make them look a lot better. Even a bit of silicone spray on there would make that look better. It's quite clean. We've got a little divider. Can smell a bit damp, but that's not unusual for a convertible because, you know, the roofs are the weak spot of a convertible and you tend to get some moisture in. Seats are pretty good condition. There's a bit of wear on the bolster there, but nothing untoward for a car on 120,000 miles. Let's put this roof down. Sounds pretty good. I 
this realistically should make a really nice car for someone. It's quite good value, being 120,000 miles. It's an M Sport, it's got the flappy paddles, it's an auto, it's diesel, so it's still like economic. You've got the power folding roof and your nice interior, etc. And we had a girl who wanted this, she'd come with her dad and she was really keen on it. Um, but obviously the engine management line came up, which threw a spanner in the works. So maybe the easiest way to explain this will be if I plug my OBD11 in again, I'll show you the codes that we've got. Then while we're connected, OBD11 have just released apps. They call it apps, which is allowing you to do modifications to the car via the OBD11 app so that we could change things like, well, I don't really know yet, but maybe like a note when you lock and unlock, maybe something to do with the mirrors, dipping, not dipping, stop start, all that sort of stuff. They didn't used to do it, they do now. So we'll find out what we can do before we get rid of this car. Right, if you haven't seen me talk about OBD11 before, it's this tiny little diagnostic tool. It's so small, it even comes with its own key ring, and I carry it with me absolutely everywhere now because it's just so handy having a little diagnostic tool with you at all times. Plug that into the car and then connect to the app on your phone. We're gonna connect to our device. There we are, BMW 3 Series. I'm gonna shut the door because it's bonging away. Now, hopefully that will be one of the things we can turn off with the OBD11. Right, it tells us BMW 3 Series, we're on 12.3 volts, tap to scan. So let's do that. Two faults found, so let's have a look. So, very interesting because currently, the only two faults that are left in there, bear in mind our guys have been in here trying to fix this, are for the rear compartment stratification flap motor. So that'd be for the blowers in the back, that's not working. And the front air flap motor. That all seemed to work fine though, but there are faults there. Now, it's a shame that's all that's left in there. I guess our guys have cleared the codes after they've been working on it. What we had was two different codes for fuel rail pressure. Um, and basically it would drive 100% fine, but if you put your foot hard down, it would ping up the engine management light. And it just seemed to, I, I don't even know if it went into a limp mode or not, but the engine management light was on. We thought it could either be the high pressure fuel pump, but it's worth trying the fuel filter first, which we've done. Next step would be taking out the injectors and having them tested, but to have four injectors tested on this would probably cost us around 100 to 120 quid, and it may not be it. So then when it comes back and it's not the injectors, then we might have to put a high pressure fuel pump in. If you want a new one, it's 750 quid, I think, plus the VAT. And I got a feeling, someone will probably tell me I'm wrong, but I got a feeling it's at the back of the engine. If it's not at the back of the engine, it's still a pig of a job to do. So. Well, we know we haven't got a huge amount of money in this anyway because he's already twisted our arm and to give him to a bit more money. And I'm not asking you to, you know, don't cry for me or whatever. And we're not wimps being kind of manhandled into offering more money. We obviously decided it was worth it because of the money that was in the other car. But it does mean that, you know, it's probably not worth pursuing trying to fix what these... It may be as simple as the injectors, but if it's not, you've already spent 120 quid. Then you've got to spend more money. And I just do not want to waste time on cars like this. So... We're gonna to have to get rid of it. But before we do, let's check out our apps on this and see what we can do on an E90 now. So we've got loads of different ones. We've got interior lighting, battery type and capacity, 12 volt battery registration. That's really handy. So say you wanted to go and have your battery changed on one of these, you actually, these days, you can't just chuck a battery in and it's happy with that. You have to tell it via a computer that it's had a new battery. So if you had your OBD11 and you wanted to go and buy yourself a battery, you wouldn't need someone with expensive diagnostics. You could do it via your OBD11 app engine fan test, headlight washer pump test. Should we do that? See, uh, do you think, have a look for me, Toby. See if we've got headlight washers on the front. Right, let's try and test that. Hey! Just to prove a point that that wasn't me doing it by my hands. Um, here you are, look, activating. Look at that. There's literally endless amounts of things you can do with a BMW E90 now. So, as I say, I carry my OBD11 with me everywhere now, and it seems like it's got quite a good few features now for the E90. So, highly recommend it. If you use my code, you can get 10% off, and I'll put a link in the description below. Get yourself one bought. So, as I say, although it drives fine, it has got an issue, I don't want to be looking into it. So, We've got other cars to go and pick up at the auctions. 
that is exactly where this is going to go. I need to get a couple of pictures of it and we're just going to send it down to auction and someone else can take on the project because I simply just don't really want to know about it. Right, I put the roof up because I spent far too long in the sun yesterday with the Transformotion lads who came down and got my two smart cars. If you haven't seen their video on that, I think by now it should be out. So we'll put a link to that in the description as well. They're going to fix those up for me, hopefully. I'll make one good one out of two bad ones. But either way, I am very fair, as you may or may not have noticed. And yeah, I was out in the sun already, so my fin, my fin, my fins and my skin is uh, feeling a little bit sun-kissed already. So it's not the day to be burning my bold spot in a convertible. What's annoying about this is it does actually drive really well and the gearbox and flappy paddles, they all work perfectly, the radio's good. Even the air conditioning is ice cold, which I'm going to turn up a little bit now. But whatever the issue is, it's going to be off-putting for most people, including me. I just cannot be bothered these days. It's the sort of thing I would have fixed in the past, because there would still be profit in it. But my philosophy now is there's easier ways to make bigger margins on other cars. Let's just get it gone, get it out of our lives and buy something with better margins in it. Like the Jaguar XKR that we're going to go and pick up now. Could be problematic, but fingers crossed it won't be. I don't know why that's not fingers crossed. That's an okay symbol. That's fingers crossed. So my plan is, because we have got to go and pick up a car from auction anyway, that I will just send this to auction, see what happens. I'll put a reserve on it, which will be less than what we paid for it. But still, having BCA partner finance, finance provided by BCA themselves to buy their own stock. They also let you sell stuff through their BCA outsourced or whatever it is, BCA partner finance sales. Um, and it's fairly decent. I think it's just 80 quid uh, to list it. Supposedly they're meant to clean it as well, but I don't think they do. They'll even pick it up from you, but that wouldn't help us in this scenario because we want to drop it there and drive another car away. And I don't know if there's a like a percentage. I think there is a small percentage of the sale price as well. Or is it all just all in for 80 quid? I cannot remember. But uh, it's not a lot anyway. It's, it's worthwhile doing. So I've just got to swing home, get the paperwork. And then we will say farewell to this BMW. Paperwork obtained. Sophie's telling me she thinks she can get more than we can get at auction. But as I've explained, she'd have to say to people, oh, it's got, you know, this engine will please stop. And it's just hassle and time and ain't nobody got time for that. Yes. Maybe boy the window fit next door was I think mean, he was checking me out. Think it was size off us. Maybe you really like the look of the uh, white BMW convertible. What I have noticed is that I think the rear shocks, or at least one of them, may be blown. Because if you go over like the bumpy stuff, you can just kind of feel it like bouncing around on the back. It's like juddering more than it should do. It should be cushioning up the bounce, but it's just maybe spring. And I think the front discs. I don't know if you're going to hear it. I think they're slightly warped as well, so even more stuff we'd have to fix on this that I just can't be bothered with. You know, we're going to, in the future, have mechanics test drive every part exchange, um, which really we were meant to be doing anyway, but okay, this, this guy came after six, so no mechanics there. And going to plug them all in, which we try and do anyway. And we're also just going to try and offer, like, if we don't want it for the forecourt, like this wouldn't have gone on the forecourt, it would have been Sophie selling it. We just want to offer peanuts, because if they don't want it then and they can go away and sell it privately or take it to another dealer, that's fine. We just don't want it. Because there's no sense to making good money on the cars that we're selling to just throw it away on crap part exchanges. Yeah. 
probably, as we carried on driving this, we'd find even more problems with it. So I'm glad to be getting rid of it. See if we can spot our XKR first. It looked to be in quite good condition but needs a bit of titivating. We know this runs now. If you hop in this, Toby, you can look at the swirl marks on it and put it around. I will take this in to say goodbye. I probably won't do it in this video, but Follow me on Instagram, shifting underscore metal. I'm gonna find out how much it actually goes for through the auction. If I see it uh, on my watch list, which hopefully I shouldn't because I'm trying not to buy this sort of stuff, then I will uh, try and record it. But either way, I'll try and give you an update on what it actually sold for. Oh yeah, all right. Oh, struggling on. At least the weather's good. Nice little bit of sunny weather, yeah. especially living in the UK. <laughs> That's pretty rare. It is, isn't it? Uh, automatic, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mileage, please, mate. 12449. 12449. Yeah, quite the facts. That went through, it never really tells you very convincingly <laughs> when you fill out the form. Uh, we've got a document pack in the car, you just got Yeah, that's all down here, yeah, so. You've got one, perfect. And it's sealed too, perfect. Uh, we got one or two keys in there. Two. Uh, Lovely job. Uh, pocket, can I have three for me, please, mate? Three, no worries. Back in the day, you used to be able to come into BCA here like this and grab your cars yourself. Not anymore. So, key box goes on the door like that. I'll just put my windows back up. Sorry, you probably just saw like way up my nose. Leave all the paperwork and everything in here. I'm even going to leave my can of Pepsi. And that's how everyone will know it's my car. Um, and then, yeah, we'll just pop the key in the key box. Right, so that's it for this video. The 3 Series E92 convertible has gone off to auction. Simply, I just can't be bothered, as I explained. I'd rather spend time and money on, although it's another E92 BMW, it's an M3. That's the sort of stuff we want to be focusing our time on. So that's, that's the plan for now. So, uh, like I say, follow me on Instagram, shifting underscore metal. And when I get an update on how much that actually sells for, if it sells and meets my reserve, I think I set a reserve of 1,750. I will let you know. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure you give it a thumbs up. It'll really help me out. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. If you haven't, get on board. It's free to do. And I'm giving away a £2,000 Tag Heuer Formula One watch completely free to celebrate hitting 75,000 subscribers when we do. And while I've got your interest talking about V8 cars, don't forget I've got my Audi RS5 that's currently being raffled off and you can win it for just £5 or £4.50 even if you use the code Toby 10. That's it for this time. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.